Oh, cold, cold day today. Now then, and welcome back to another episode of Adventure Fishing UK. Today I am fishing a private farm stream and look at it, it's snowy. What an absolute result that is. So I have actually been quite lucky with how I'm able to fish this spot in particular. Someone dropped a comment, uh, Luke Furness, huge thanks to you for sorting this out, saying that his granddad had just bought a field that had fishing rights on a small stream and it didn't happen to be too far away from where I'm living. So decided to hop in the car, make the journey down and here I am. No idea what today's going to be like, but grayling's the target. I'll be talking to you a bit more about the method later. But hopefully we can get onto some fish. So you know me, I'm a predator angler mostly. I don't do a lot of uh, this sort of thing, but come winter time when everything else is a bit slower, I'm wanting to keep things mixed up for you as viewers, just to try and like vary the sort of fishing I'm doing. And grayling just so happened to be a great fish to target come this time of year, really active through the winter months. So hopefully we're gonna have a good day's fishing today. I mean, it could go either way. Also chance of a good chub today or a few trout, but we will try and avoid that where possible because they are out of season. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So I've just walked most of the length of this stream. Really important thing to do if you're fishing somewhere new, just to identify your target point. And this here, is where I'm going to start. We've got a little back eddy coming off a little channel on the other side where the water seems to be flowing almost the other direction. Looks a bit deeper and hopefully that's where there's going to be some fish sat. As always with this sort of fishing, getting a good bit of ground bait in is very important. Little and often is what I go for but don't take my word for it trying to get some maggots now right the way over into the, the far side benefit of wellies is you can take a few you can take a few steps into the water and just make sure your positioning's bob on there we go we're in and we're fishing so that first spot i have to admit i was struggling to hold bottom with any of my weights i've only brought up to 15 grams which is a mistake so I have sort of clipped two of them together to try and give me a bit more but it still wasn't working in that fast flow so I'm just heading down to a nice little bit by a bridge that looks a lot more slow, a lot deeper and hopefully I'll have a better chance there. So I have my first little cast here now. I'd say I've got reasonably high hopes for this stretch just by this bridge. It is deep, deeper than I thought it was when I first got here. And I've even got a little rod rest. <laughs> Perfect. Now we wait. So, so far today, I'm actually finding this really difficult to fish because there's quite a long, deep stretch here and not really knowing where the fish are when I'm ledgering. It can be tough to get going. I do wish I had a float trot and set up, but I'm fairly incompetent when it comes to tying float rigs I've tried before and it's never gone well for me so I'm just gonna keep persevering but I think fishing stationary in a place like this is not gonna be easy. So the rod I'm using today is a bit different this is the Rigged and Ready X5 Adventure we've got the RR3000 fixed ball spinning reel on there too and the main difference today is I'm using a quiver tip now this actually comes with it along with the fly fishing tip and the lure fishing tips this is extra sensitive so you can see even the smallest bites but there's my rod down there and we've just got it tucked behind this big branch there's like a slightly slower bit of water coming in there that's sort of where i've got my bait at the moment and of course a trusty pinch of maggots <clears throat> let's go something just happened my rod just moved ever so slightly i don't know if it was the current or a little knock but I'm poised and ready. I hope it was a little knock. It'd be the first sign of fish we've had all day. 
plenty of maggots. Let's really get these fish feeding. There must be fish in here somewhere. There must be. Right, time to move on to somewhere where I can get cast under that bridge. When all else fails, go through a bridge. If I don't catch anything there, then maybe a bit of exploring is going to be on the cards. Right, so we're at the bridge now. It is quite shallow in the middle, but it looks like as it sort of hugs the middle pillar that it deepens. Got no idea how this is going to go, but we'll start just at the top. Just had a little knock and I think we're in. Sorry, I missed the strike. It seems like a small fish though. Don't know what it is, I'm not seeing it just yet, but I'm hoping it's a grayling. Been waiting a long time, very patiently for this. And it is a grayling, not a bad one either. And we've got it, come on, get in. So look at this for an absolutely stunning fish. Beautiful grayling, it's not one of those ones with the big fins. I think that means it's probably a male rather than a female or the other way around. Definitely not the biggest grayling I've ever caught, just giving it a nice rest in this water and it'll be back on its way. Off it goes, just chilling in that current. Well, it has not been an easy day's fishing so far, but I am so thrilled to be just getting a fish on the bank. Not the biggest grayling ever, but it's a target species. At least it wasn't a trout, so please. So I thought I'd just take this moment to give you a quick tutorial. Now, if you know anything about course fishing, do not listen to me here. The way I like to do things is I like to find a really easy way to do it. And then I can share for you guys that don't know how to fish in a particular way, how to do it. So this is the easiest way you can rig this up. I didn't know how to do it myself until, I don't know, a couple months ago, but I'll just show you some of the things you need to do this. So you need some weights. I like to use the flat sided weights, but anything works really. This is 15 gram. You'll also need some size 16 completely barbless hooks. It's so important when you're fishing for grayling because they can take them quite deep. And you'll also need some simple ledger stops. So for this rig, all you do is you thread your weight or weights in this instance onto your line. Then you put your ledger stop, which is just a little thing you thread onto the line and then you poke a matching bit through just to secure it. And then you just tie your hook, barbless hook, onto the end of this line. So I'm just having another cast now, right back into where I just was. Now I get most of my fishing stuff from Jerry. So if you nip into there, you'll find Jerry's and more from the fishing shop. You'll find everything you need to set up a rig like this. But I will stress, if you know anything about course fishing, then don't listen to me. This is just a bare bones, simple as possible way to catch grayling on a river. Same goes for the bait. Jerry's has always got good bait in, whether that be coarse, pike, especially sea fishing. Everything you need in there. Might have just had a bit more interest on this rod. Got my eyes on it like a hawk, that little rod tip down there. Could have just been a leaf or something floating down the water though. It didn't look like a big bite. It's sort of difficult to work out where the best place is to put this bait because Normally when you fish places like this, you know roughly what the bottom's like and where's deepest and where the fish are going to be held up, but just approaching it all blind can be a bit tricky, but that's sort of, sort of where the fun is as well. I have to admit I'm surprised I've not had a few more bites to be honest. So I've just found what looks like another nice little back eddy sort of thing. 
pretty deep too. Looks like good sort of grailing ground to me. Again, I just missed the bite, but I've got a fish on. Feels bigger as well. Feels like a decent grayling, this. Quite a lot bigger. Now, I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna land this, but this is a beautiful fish. This could even be a PB. Maybe not. Looks chunky though. All right, time to risk life and limb getting right down. This very slippy, snowy slope on this ice cold stream. Then I'll just take it around to somewhere a lot easier to get a photo of. That is a stunning fish. Oh God, this is difficult. Look at my hands. Oh, cold, cold day today. Perfect grayling weather. What an absolute beauty that is. Come here. Got it, yes. Get in. So this is a PB grayling right here. Just giving it a really long rest, just so you can see it close up. Then I'm just gonna take out the water for a very quick picture and then we'll get it off on its way. Look at this for an absolute beauty of a grayling. These fish are just something else. I can't believe I've just come here and caught that. What a majestic fish. The lady of the stream. To be honest, I am nothing short of shocked after that. Coming to this, well, I suppose it doesn't look very small there, but in general, quite a small farm stream. And we have just caught my biggest ever grayling. Lost for words, I mean. Did not expect that to happen today. I've not done that much grayling fishing in the past, so I suppose a fish of about a pound and a half, maybe. Maybe not an achievement to some, but to me, that's made my day. That has made my day. If you are enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate everyone that joins the Adventure Fishing UK journey. Hit that like button too and drop a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Could have found myself seriously in the drink then. That wouldn't have been good. But what a beautiful day. Nice snow underfoot. Nice crunch. There's even a hammock there. I mean, it's looking a bit worse for wear. I don't fancy a lounge in that. <laughs> Gotta be the world's least appealing looking hammock, that. Luke, you are an absolute hero for sorting me permission to fish here. Much appreciated. Always got to tip your leftover bait, don't you? And today happens to be quite a lot. Going to be some very happy grayling downstream, isn't there? Well, thank you all very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you here for the next one. I know it's quite cheeky of me to ask, but if anyone does have permission to fish anywhere interesting or different or special, especially in the Northwest, I'd love to hear about it. And if you're up for it, I'd love to come and join you. Let me know and I'll catch you down the road.